Welcome to Dynamaker Demos, Perforated Metal Sheet. Have you ever wondered about the logic behind a configurable perforated sheet? In this video, we show step-by-step -step how it can be done in Dynamaker. First off, start by having an assembly with the main properties that will drive the geometry of the perforated sheet. Width, depth, and thickness for now. You can reuse the property height and just rename it by pressing F2 so it's changed throughout the component. Having reasonable default values for each property and adjusting the color with some metalness will give a better starting look for the geometry. Next, let's focus on the whole pattern. You can start by copying the snippet rectangular pattern from the documentation and adding it into Geome 2D for now. We will merge the resulting pattern sketch with the base sketch of our sheet. We can use this function in the component tab by typing geom2d.generate rectangular pattern sketch. The inputs of this function are the sketch to use in the pattern, which is the whole sketch that could be a small square with a size as a constant, the size of the bounds that covers the pattern as a 2D vector, which could be the sheet size here, the spacing between holes as another 2D vector in both X and Y directions the whole size. And finally a boolean saying if we want to auto-center the pattern following said bounds. Once we save the changes we can see how the pattern behaves depending on the input values. As a second step of our perforated sheet app, we will move these constants to the component properties so that we can create parameters out of them easily later. For this, we will update the interface properties so that the component knows its properties and their type. When using the properties within the component functions, we can wrap them up like the following so it's easier to add more in the future by simply pressing control space. Once saved, we can already see how the geometry behaves with the default configurator on your left. However, we will update this configurator so it has a proper parameter for each property we want to configure. For this, we will go into the Parameters tab and create a parameter for each property through the library SkyParam. Each parameter mainly requires a unique ID, a label that will be shown in the actual configurator and optional arguments that allow us to have more control like maximum and minimum values, units, or step size. The default values should be connected to the corresponding component property so that it doesn't get reset every time the configurator is created later in the UI. For that, we will call all the properties at the beginning of the function as we did previously in the Component tab. As for other types of parameters, like dropdowns, it requires a list of options as SkyParam dropdown item, which will consist of a label and its value. Its default value can be set automatically by typing thicknessParameter.setValue. Then once we have all the properties ready for our configurator, we will replace the default test configurator with a new one that has the list of properties in the order we want to show them. As a final step of our configurator, the component properties should be updated in the completion callback of the configurator, which is a function that is triggered every time the user makes a change in a parameter. So we will use component.setProperties with an object with all the properties we want to update as input. The parameter values can be accessible through values, given the ID of each parameter for every property. In order to avoid misspelling or mixing up properties with parameters, it's good to wrap these IDs in some sort of constant as we do here at the top of the code editor. Once you save your changes, you will see the preview of your new configurator, available for testing. Finally, the third and last step of our perforated sheet app will be to connect this component to the UI. Before diving into the UI, Make sure to publish your component so that the latest version is used throughout your app, like in the UI or possible drawings, for example. You can also update the component thumbnail that is visible in your app dashboard. Once we step out of the component editor, we will go into the UI editor. Make sure to import your component, in this case assembly, at the top of the code section. Then you can create a new assembly component and add it to your application through the component handler of the studio, so to say. You can immediately update the geometry visible in your application through studio.requestGeometryUpdate and then update the camera with the function given in the default template. If you save and update, 
you will see your assembly component with the default property values you gave. As for the tab content, we will simply replace the default parameter and button with the configurator we created and add a new completion callback to the configurator so that the geometry gets updated for every valid configuration. Remember that we already have a second completion callback in the configurator from the parameters tab of the component, which is also triggered for every change in the parameters performed and in charge of updating the component properties. For testing purposes, the first completion callback has a geometry update only within the component editor, so that there is no need to test it in the UI. However, a geometry update does not exist in the UI editor and must be included in a second completion callback, as we have done here. This allows you as a developer to have more control of the geometry updates, which can be critical in certain applications with heavy models and regeneration of complex geometries. With this last change, we could say that the app is ready to be public or deployed. Then we can go into the deployment wizard of the app dashboard, assign a deploy slot of our team, and deploy to the test environment to start with. Then the app can be accessible through a URL ready for testing. If we are happy with the result, and have corrected any possible bugs, we can deploy the application to the production environment which is intended for the end user. An agile methodology is well suitable when adding more features to our application. As a developer, a good start is always testing these new changes within the component and UI editors. You should deploy a new version of the app to the test environment first. To make sure everything is connected as expected, considering any possible feedback, and finally deploy it again to the production environment so that the end user gets your latest changes into the live application. Do you want to know more? Check out our documentation at docs.dynamaker.com.